you can turn in your manual to page six. Yeah, you can put your notes away. Turn to page six in your training manual. And we're going to learn the pieces. Now, as we go through, we're going to talk about the pieces, and then we're going to cut stuff, and then uh, afterwards, you're going to eat. All right, so Mrs. and Mr. Who? Jones. Who? Jones. We have two larger set options for customers who love to what? Cook. Called the ultimate set and what? Signature. But I'm going to show you the pieces in our what set? Basic set. Of course, you can buy just individual pieces, but most customers agree that over a what? Lifetime. Sets are a much better what? Value. It's important to have the right tool for the right situation because of safety and what? Efficiency. Would you agree that if you used a really small knife on a really big job, it would be unsafe? Yeah, yeah if I use a paring knife on a watermelon, then I'm going to you know, stab myself, right? If I used a really big knife on a really small job, that would be dangerous too, right? If my fingers would get in the way, I'd cut myself. Also, efficiency. You have to have the right tool for the right what? job. Generally, you know, the rule of thumb is that whatever you're cutting, the knife has to be at least one to three inches longer than what you're cutting. So if I have a small knife like this, this is called our trimmer, if I'm trying to cut a chicken with it or a turkey with it, I'm going to be going sawing back and forth, I'm going to stab myself. It's just way too small. So it's got to be between a couple inches longer than what you're cutting, you know, so I need a, you know, big knife for the big stuff, small knife for the small stuff. So it's important to have the right tool for the right job. Ladies, how many pairs of shoes do you have? Way too many, right? There's a shoe for every occasion, occasion for every shoe. You're not going to wear your sneakers to a formal outing. You're not going to wear your heels to mow the lawn. It's important to have the right shoe for the right outfit, the right occasion. Guys, anybody play golf? Okay, so you need the right club for the right shot, right? You're not going to you know, use a putter off the tee and you're not going to use a driver out of the sand. It's important to have the right club for the right shot, shot for your club, club for a shot. So it's important to have the right tool for the right job. Same thing with kitchen cutlery. You can't get by with just one knife. Okay, so, um, so it's important to have the right tool for the right job, safety and efficiency. All right, our basic set is the most what? Popular. And it's called the homemaker plus what? Eight. eight. Why does it call the uh, plus eight? Eight, eight table knives. knives. Perfect. Has the minimum number of tools to do 100% of the jobs in your kitchen as efficiently as what? Possible. It's the best value for your average family and starts with your what? Parent. Why do we say the word your? Why is your so important? Ownership. Ownership. You want to feel like it's already there. So if I hand this paring knife to Kristen, and then as I'm talking about it, she's cutting and she's holding it and playing around with it, so then when I take it back, she's going to say, ah. Oh, my paring knife, okay? So the idea is you wanna make sure that your customer is holding it the entire time. So the way it works is every knife you get to, you're gonna say the name of the knife. Now, if you have it in your set, it will say hand knife to customer, cut something, and then explain. Who do you wanna do the cutting, you or them? Yeah. Them. So I say the first tool in your set is your paring knife. I hand over the paring knife and I have Mrs. Jones cut stuff while I'm explaining it. So I explain what it's used for while she's playing around with it. Now, if you don't have the knife in your set, it'll say point to the picture. So in your blue book, what you'll do is you'll just point to the knives in the blue book and you'll say the next tool is your spatula spreader. Okay, and you point to it as you talk about it. Now, all you really need is just one knife. I mean, honestly, if you have the petite carver, just the one knife that we cut rope with, you could sell the whole ultimate set. All they really need to feel is the handle and how well it cuts the rope so they know the edge is awesome. And then after that, every knife is just a different shape and size depending on the type of food you're cutting. Why is it more awesome to have a lot of knives in your set and to win as much as possible in your fast art? Because it's more fun. The more knives you have, it's more fun. You get to eat more. Plus, it's yours forever, and you'll never have to buy knives ever again. So the more you accumulate, makes your demos more fun. But you could sell the whole ultimate set if you just have one knife. You get a couple in your sample kit to start off with, and then you'll accumulate more. So the first tool is your paring knife. Every knife has a name of the knife. Now, don't worry about the dimensions where it says two and three quarter inch. Don't worry about that. Just say paring knife. And then it says a nickname. So the paring knife is called the what knife? Air knife. Air knife. And, then it sa and then it tells you what to do. So uh, why is the paring knife called the air knife? Why do you think? It's for jobs in the air. Jobs in the air. Perfect, Connor. Perfect. Who in here cooks, by the way? Okay. I didn't cook. Who doesn't cook? Who was like me when I, when I was in high school? Okay. I was 18. It was mac and cheese and Pop-Tarts. I never used a paring knife at all in my life. Now I use it all the time. I have the ultimate set uh, with the, uh, the cherry block and the pearl handle. It's just so awesome. It's just it's so I just go home every day and I look at my set and it's just the coolest thing in the world. Uh, but I never cooked when I was in high school. So do you think I ever used a paring knife? No. 
No, but as long as I followed the manual and I got excited, my customers got excited too. It's important to make sure that you get excited about each piece individually, not just the pieces that you like. Because if you only get excited about the pieces you like, you're going to sell a lot of spatula spreaders, okay? <laughs> this thing is really cool, but you've got to get excited about each piece. So even if you would never use a butcher knife, like you're like, what would I ever use a butcher knife, okay? You got to get excited about it for the customer because they, they use a butcher knife, right? So uh, it's very, very important. Now, who uses a paring knife pretty regularly? Does anybody use a paring knife? What do you notice that's different about this paring knife? Perfect, Jeremiah. It's got the long handle. What are your customers going to notice automatically, immediately? The long handle. Most paring knives, most paring knives, they have short, stubby handles that dig into your palm. Would you agree? I guarantee you that once you put this in your customer's hand, you've sold it. 100% guaranteed, without a doubt, when mom holds this or grandma holds this, they're going to freak out. Who thinks their mom would freak out when they hold on to that handle? They're going to freak out and they're going to say, all right, this one's mine. Right? If you can get them excited about each piece in the set, then it makes sense to buy a what? A set. So you've got to get excited about each piece individually. So it's got a really long handle. That's the calling card for our paring knife. Short, stubby uh, blade. Now it's a straight edge, so it's never used for what? Back and forth. It's only used in the what? in the air. So it's called the air knife because it's only used in the air. So uh, I need a, Sean, if you can read for me the paring knife where it says everyone needs. Everyone needs a good paring knife. Keep those long handle makes sure the paring comfortable. You'll use this for small jobs in the air, but rarely on a cutting board. And that's why you have your... Perfect. Cross off the word rarely, write never. Do we have a banana? No. Okay. Uh, cross off rarely and write never. It's never used in the cutting board. Now, the reason why paring knives go dull pretty easily in most households is because grandma sits there and she's like chopping celery with a paring knife. It's inefficient, takes a long time, plus that straight edge blade is only supposed to be used in the air because the food's not going to dull a, a knife, just the, uh, the cutting board. Now, you can go towards yourself with a paring knife and you're not going to cut yourself. So, tops off of strawberries, bananas, and cereal. You can go towards yourself. Never go like this. You will slice yourself. It's very, very sharp, but you can go against your finger if you're taking tops off of strawberries, things like that. Now, do you think it's okay to let your customer know to like mention a couple other things that it could be used for? Yes. You think that's okay? Yes. What does that do? It builds what? Value. value. So the more ideas, the more Mrs. Jones can see that she would use each piece, the more value it builds. So you can jot them down in the margin. Now I wouldn't add in a ton, but as Mrs. Jones is playing with the knife, you can say, oh, you can also use it for this and this and this. So what Sean just explained is perfect, but you can also mention a couple other things. That way they can get some other ideas what they would use it for. So I'm going to show you the paring knife. And uh, I don't use paring knives uh, you know, to, to take the skin off apples because I love uh, skin on apple. But for Mrs. Jones, who does this for her kids, look how smooth this is. Is, just goes right around the outside. It doesn't take big chunks off. It's really smooth and you see the full handle so it's not digging into my hand at all. And I just go around the entire thing just like that. It's super easy. Do you think Mrs. Jones would have an easy time with this? Yeah. Is this cool or what? Yeah. You guys like that? You just go around the entire thing. You see the importance of having a good paring knife in the house? Everybody needs a good paring knife. What's up? I have a paring knife that's at home but it's different and it came from another company but like when you peel it like is this, a, is this a comment that's going to be helpful? Oh, it cu cuts off in chunks? Like it has more chunks. So it sucks. Good. Yeah, most paring knives what? Sucks. Cool. All right. And then this one doesn't cut in chunks. Sweet. Thank you, Kiana. All right. So that's the paring knife only used in the air. You guys got that? Okay. So again, you could give other examples is, uh, and you could talk about, you know, bananas and cereal, tops off strawberries, things like that, eyes out of potatoes, right? So, uh, but the, uh, the paring knife is, uh, is crucial to the set. All right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pass it around and I'm going to give you, I'm going to pass it to Sean. He's going to get first. It's going to go all the way down. It's going to loop around. And when it gets to the end, when it gets to Remy, uh, then one of the assistant managers is going to grab it and bring it to the back. All right. So that's the first tool in the set. Now, every knife, what you notice that, that, uh, Sean said is he talked about all the things that it's used for. But then it also says what it's not used for. So the paring knife is used for all your foods in the air, but never on the cutting board. That's why you have your what? Trimmer. Trimmer. So every knife says what it's used for, but it also says what it's not used for. Does that make sense? Each piece leads into the other piece, and they're very transitional, so it go, they're, they're complementary as well, so that it leads into the other piece. All the pieces in the homemaker set are just the basic pieces, so every one of them is necessary for average everyday cooking. So each piece leads to the next one. The next tool in your set is your what? Trimmer. Trimmer. It's called the uh, small what knife? Utility. Utility knife. Okay, now why is this one too small for a chicken? 
Exactly, it's not bigger than a chicken. So it's too small, it would be dangerous, it would be inefficient. So you can't use this for the big stuff, it's only for the small stuff. Oranges, apples, small fruits and veggies on the cutting board, also tomatoes. All right, so uh, Paul, can you read for me loud and proud the trimmer? Do you have a tomato or a soft fruit we can cut? I do, I've got a juicy ripe tomato. This is your utility knife for small fruits and veggies. You'll never smash a tomato ever again. Mine has a pearl handle. Which color do you like better? I like the, uh, I like the pearl better. Everyone loves it because it's so versatile, but it never, but it's never used for spreading or serving. That's why you have your... Perfect. So uh, whatever handle color they like better, just say me too. Right, whether they say classic or pearl, just say, yeah, me too, it's my favorite, right? Just agree with whatever they say. Uh, now, I hate tomatoes. I absolutely despise tomatoes, and I wanna vomit every time I think about tomatoes. They're gross, they're nasty, ugh. But I cut them on every single presentation. Why do you think I cut them on every presentation? They're impossible to cut. Who's ever smashed a tomato with a normal knife? You ever get stuff on your shirt, and you get, it's just, how many slices of tomato do you get with a normal knife? Yeah, yeah, very few, very few. So it's important to have the, uh, this trimmer. It is awesome. You might end up wasting a ton of scraps. Would you agree that most families waste a bunch of tomatoes by wasting scraps? Yeah. Okay, perfect. With the trimmer, though, this trimmer is absolutely unbelievable. And um, all right, so check this out. I want the, uh, the, back, uh, the back row, I want you guys to stand up so you can see. This is the number one knife sold since 1949. Okay, number one knife sold. It's the most popular knife. It's the easiest one. It's the most versatile. This thing is sick. Now check this out. I'm not gonna put any, any effort into this. I'm gonna make a really smooth, thin, perfect slice of this tomato. And this is like juicy and ripe. Okay, this thing is awesome. Are you related to Shamanda? I am not, but I would whoop his ass in a sales contest. Check this out. Did you see that? What's the name of the company? Cutco. What's the name of the company? Cutco. Cutco. Check that out, bam, Mrs. Jones. You can see the Cutco logo through the, uh, you know, through the tomato slice. You can pass this around. Look how thin that is. Is it possible to get a thin slice of tomato like that on any other knife? Check this out. You can go forwards like this. It's like a contact lens. Okay, you can see the veins in the tomato. Check it out. So you go forwards like this. Oh wow, unreal. Pass this around. Can we pass it back? You can pass it back for sure. You can do whatever you want. Okay. Check that out. That is the thinnest slice. Hey, by the way, would you ever go check? You see this? Would you ever go straight down on a tomato? No. Why? What happens? Squish it. Is that unbelievable or what? Yeah. Is that sick? If you cut a tomato in your demo, are they going to buy this knife? Yes. If they hold on to the paring knife and feel the handle, are they going to buy that knife? Yeah. Every knife, if you build value for it, what are they going to buy? The set. The homemaker set. Exactly. You guys getting excited about this? Who, who, here, uh, who here knows some soccer moms? You guys know soccer moms? Check this out, okay? Take the top off, take the bottom off, set it straight up, okay? Just drag it right through. Is that cool or what? How hard is it to cut apples? Why is it hard to cut apples? Because the core and also they're dense, right? Do you see how important it is to cut food in your demo? Yeah. The more you cut, the more you're going to sell. This thing is awesome. So that's the trimmer. It's the small utility knife. That thing is awesome. All right. But the trimmer is never used for spreading or serving. That's why you have your what? Spatula, spatula spreader. The spatula spreader is incredible. Uh, assistant managers, I need you to be more on point. And I need you to clear off my cutting board, please. All right. So spatula spreader. And I need you to be as quickly as possible. All right. So the spatula spreader. Have you ever? Um, Anybody ever done like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches with, like with a normal knife and you like try to get jelly and you have to like balance it on the knife and it like falls off and you ruin the bread? <laughs> ever do that? Anybody ever try to uh, do cream cheese on a bagel but you have to do like 25 spreads to get the right amount of cream cheese and it takes you like 10 minutes? Okay, you know the Philadelphia cream cheese commercial where it's like the perfect spread? This thing is sick. All right, this is the spatula spreader. Also, have you ever tried to cut a, a piece of pie? What happens to the first piece of pie? It ruins it. Ruins the first piece of pie. Have you ever? Because why? It doesn't have the edge on a pie cutter, right? So have you ever cut lasagna? 
and with a normal spatula and you like the middle noodle gets sucked in you ruin the whole thing okay this is unbelievable it has so many uses this is my uh, one of my favorite pieces I like all pieces uh, equally but this is a very very favorite one uh, here's the um, here's what's cool about this knife now let's read it first actually because we gotta read it before I'm, I'm just getting way ahead of myself I'm getting too excited Logan can you read for me the spatula spreader um, it's very flexible and it has a double D edge. You'll spread and cut sandwiches and you'll slice and serve casseroles and cakes. But you'll never use it on meat or medium sized vegetables. That's why you have your. Perfect. Okay, so for icing, cutting cakes, spreading and serving, this thing is insane. Okay, we've got a piece of pie here. Thank you for whoever brought the apple pie. You brought this. Thank you, Chris. Okay, we've got the, uh, we've got the bagel and cream cheese. Now, it's got the double D edge. What I like about this. With the double D edge, is my here's the thing. My dad loves this knife. This is one of his favorites because what he'll do is he'll go into the kitchen. He's a football fan. Anybody have a dad that's a football fan? Okay, he goes into in, during commercial break, and what he'll do is he'll make a sandwich real quick because he doesn't want to miss a play. Okay, so or he like he watches like a lot of horse racing, so he'll like go in between races, make a sandwich. But he'll take this one knife, he'll cut his tomato. He will spread his mayo and his mustard. He'll cut his bagel first, right? He does bagels because he's from Philly. Right? So he cuts his bagel, spreads his mayo, spreads his mustard, cuts his tomato, puts his turkey on there, cuts his sandwich all with one knife. And it's like an over-the-shoulder toss into the, like into the sink as he's rushing back in front of the TV. That way he doesn't miss a play. He loves this knife. Now, my mom loves this knife because growing up we had sandwiches, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, tuna fish egg salad. You think moms like this knife? It is awesome. Lasagna, a lot of times we did lasagna, so it's perfect for that. It's got a ton of uses. Now check this out. Okay, with the cream cheese, it's the perfect spread. It's a healthy portion of cream cheese. A second and a half. Unbelievable, right? Is that nasty or what? And nasty is a good thing, by the way. Do you guys like that? This thing is cool. It is the coolest knife. Uh, but again, you can't get too excited about it. My brother, my middle brother, he sold a ton of spatula spreaders uh, because he only got excited about the pieces that he really liked. And then he, like on the other ones, he wouldn't be as enthused because he didn't use them as much. Um, so it's important to get excited about every knife individually. Now, when you cut that first piece of pie, what happens? Ruins it. What would happen with this piece of pie with a normal knife? There's no chance. Like I wouldn't even buy this because I knew I know there'd just be. You might as well just eat it with your hands, right? There's just no way that you can cut a good piece of pie with this. This spatula spreader, though, it's got the double D edge, so you can cut. Okay, goes through the crust, but also doesn't like ruin all the apples because when you have a piece of apple pie, it like sucks all the apples from like one side of the pie to the other. Okay, it ruins the whole thing. But then it's flexible, so you can get underneath and you can serve it just like that. The perfect piece of pie every single time. Is that nuts or what? You guys like this knife? Now, don't lick the spatula spreader because it's got a double D edge. So even if there's like chocolate icing on it, don't lick it because it's super sharp and it will cut. All right? You guys like this one? There's a rumor that you can win this this weekend in your fast start contest. But it's never used for meat or medium sized vegetables. That's why you have your what? You have your petite carver. Okay, the petite carver, what uh, color handle does it have? Classic, right? The black handles, that's called classic. Here you go, Johnny. It's got the, uh, the, the classic handle. There you go. Cool. All right, so it's got the black handle. This is the one that we cut the, uh, the rope with yesterday. And, uh, and everybody's been telling you over the past two days to cut what in your demos? Pineapples. Pineapples. Okay, so they've been telling you to cut pineapples. Why do you, have to cut, why, why do you think they say cut pineapple? They're impossible. Have you ever cut a, t a pineapple with a normal knife? Yes. What happens to it? Yeah, exactly. So, hey guys, focus on me. I know we're having fun here, but you got to focus on me. All right, this uh, petite carver, it's used for meat and medium-sized vegetables. All right, uh, so let's read it first and then we'll cut. Uh, Chris, you're up on the petite carver. This customer favorite in-between knife has two important jobs. First, it's for the large summer fruit and tough vegetables tough vegetables. Do you have a large fruit we can cut? Yeah, I happen to have a pineapple. Oh, this is the one you brought, didn't you, Chris? No, I brought a pie. No, I was I'm acting like your customer. Okay, go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> Second, it's your everyday meat knife for chicken and small roast, and it's used with your... Perfect. You guys hear, keep on hearing the word your? Your, your, your. And you notice how everything has its uses, but it has also what it's not used for. Now, the pineapple. It's tough to cut a pineapple with a normal knife. Now, this, what is it also used for besides big fruit? What else is it used for? 
tough vegetables, okay? Uh, like, and also your everyday what? Chickens, like your meats, right? This is a perfect chicken knife. Why? Because it's not too big, not too small. Now, I'm not going to use this on a turkey because a turkey's way too what? Big. And I'm not going to use this on a tomato because a tomato's too what? Small. So it's important to have the right tool for the right what? Yeah. Because of safety and? Efficiency. Beautiful. All right, so this is your everyday meat knife. This is probably the most versatile. If I were only to choose one knife, if I had to have only one knife, it would probably be the Petite Carver. Really, really versatile. All right, check this out. Is anybody timing me? Is that, can we give it up for the Petite Carver? You guys see how awesome this knife is? Now do you see why everyone's been saying pineapple for the past two days? If you cut a pineapple in your demo, is there any way they're not getting this knife? No way. And at this point, we're building value for every piece individually. And if you build value for every piece individually, it makes sense to buy a what? And you see how I'm having fun with this too? Like I'm getting excited, I'm like getting pumped. Yeah, that's and exactly. So as a rep, you want to get excited in your demo. If you're just cutting, you're like, well, there it goes. <laughs> you know, you're, you're not gonna you're not gonna get your customer excited. So you've got to get really pumped with every knife. And if the more pumped you get, uh, the more excited they're gonna get too, and uh, the more you're gonna sell. So that is the petite carver. Did anyone bring like a salami or a pepperoni roll or anything like that? No salami, man. Weak sauce. All right, so there's the Petit Carver. You guys see that, and you can pass it to Logan. Uh, you guys see the importance of, you, of having the Petit Carver in the set? Yes. Okay, so it's your everyday meat knife and also your large uh, summer fruits and vegetables. Question, Chris? Yeah, at this point, are we still letting the customer do the cutting? Yeah, for the pineapple, you can do that just because it's so awesome and it's like a cool trick. Uh, but have them do it too. It's like you can do what I just did and then have them cut the rest. Okay, with the tomato, you can do the trick with like the little sliver and then just say, here you go, you do it. So I always try to get like to kind of like warm them up. I would do like one cut and then I'd say, hey, you, you've got to try this out. Okay. Should we ever like have them test out their knife? Uh, not on the food, on the rope, yeah, you will, obviously, and the leather, but not really on the food. It's not necessary. If they want to, they can. Uh, it's just going to be hilariously horrible uh, for them. But yeah, I mean, it, it really doesn't matter. Um, all right, so that's the, uh, the Petit Carver. It's used along with your what? Turning fork. turning fork. The turning fork is the most underrated tool in the set. I love the turning fork. I use this every single day. Now, when I was 18, did I use this at all? No way, because it was just a fork. Okay, but now I use it all the time, every day. It's one of my favorites. Okay, the reason why it's a favorite is because it's got so many uses. Most people don't appreciate the importance of a good turning fork until they've used the Cutco turning fork. So, Kristen, if you can read for us the turning fork. Besides everyday carving, your turning fork gets a lot of use. The three sharp tines will, will turn meats and vegetables like chicken in the frying pan. Getting things out of jars could never be easier. None of the pieces so far are used for larger foods. That's why you have it. Perfect. Now everyone say tines. 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 Perfect. So the tines, they're shaped to make them easier to use. The way that it's shaped is it flares out on the outside. That way you get a really good hold and you can play the trick on the dog. It's not going anywhere. You can, you know, it's, it's stuck in there. Has anybody ever chased bacon around the pan? Have you ever done that? Has anybody ever tried to like uh, flip a chicken but you can't do it so you have to like kind of like flip it over the edge? Has anybody ever tried to get pickles or cherries out of a jar? Yeah. Okay, and you stab it like a hundred times, you're like, screw it, you dip your hand in there, and you got pickle juice all over. Okay, so it's, uh, it's got a, it flares out, so it's got a good hold, but then it's flattened out in the back, so it slides right off. So it's really easy to turn, just like this. You can do it with a tomato peel, you can do it with stir fry, you can do it with chicken, you could do it with anything that you need, French toast, waffles, whatever you want to do. Okay, this thing is awesome. I could turn it all day. Just look at this. This is just fun. How cool is this? I just, it, would you agree that it's fun to use Cutco? Would you agree yeah. that the more they have, the more fun they have cooking? Yeah. If they have more, if they have more fun cooking, do you think they'll probably eat it at home more and eat out less often? Yeah. If they eat out less often, do you think they'll save a lot of money? Yeah. If they save a lot of money, is, good, is Cutco a good investment? Yeah. So it makes sense to buy a what? Yeah. yeah, I never eat out. I only eat out when I treat my top reps to fancy meals and you know limo trips and things like that. Otherwise, I just I eat at home all the time. I cook so much because I love it because my cutco is fun to use. Gage, question? Uh, when we're using the turning knife, would you want us to just like do it with 
how you're doing it. Yeah, that's fine, and you have them try too. You, you don't get this in your in your uh, sample kit to start off. You get to win this in a contest. That you haven't told us about. The fast start. Well, because you guys aren't excited enough about it. Cecily, that is a bold-faced lie. All right, all right. So I need way more energy than that. All right. Now it doesn't have a full tang. Why does this not have a full tang? Well, where do you use it? Over a hot what? Surface. You don't want to get hot in your hand. You don't want to burn your hand. Um, so it does. It is chemically bonded to the thermal resin. It's not coming out ever. And if it does, it's forever what? Guaranteed. I've never seen a turning fork come out of the, the handle. It's impossible. Uh, you guys like this piece? Yeah. You see the importance of having this in the set? Okay, cool. All right. None of the pieces we uh, talked about so far are used for what? Larger foods. That's why you have your what? Butcher knife. Butcher knife. All right. You guys ready for it? Oh, I'm so ready. Are you ready for the watermelon? Oh, my goodness. All right. So the butcher knife, this knife is so awesome. <laughs> it looks like a machete, right? Now, this is, it's important. Even though it looks scary, it's, 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 this, it's very uh, important to have because it protects your other knives with big stuff. If you use a really small knife on a big, heavy-duty job, would that be dangerous? Yeah. If you use this knife on a big job, it's not dangerous because it's going to do the job, right? So it's important to have knives like this so you can take care of the heavy-duty stuff. All right, so butcher knife. Dylan, you're up. Um, this is your heavy-duty knife that protects your other knives. It's for melons and all types of squash. You also have to use it for the joints of ribs and whole chicken, um, but it's not a chopping knife. That's why you have your... Perfect. So the, uh, the butcher knife, it's, for, uh, it's separating uh, like chickens and roasts and frozen foods. You can write down in the margin, you can write down frozen food. Really, really good for frozen food. Whose family does a lot of like frozen, like has like that freezer with all the frozen food in it? Butcher knife is perfect. It's also, uh, it's got a straight edge, so it's never used for what? sawing back and forth. It's only for a precision cut. So the butcher knife is never used on the cutting board for back and forth. But with a watermelon, how hard is it to cut a watermelon with a normal knife? It's really hard. Okay, the butcher knife also has a meat tenderizer in the back so you can tenderize your meat. Okay, this is for your big heavy duty meats. Okay, going right through chickens. Has anybody ever bought a whole chicken in a grocery store? You buy a whole chicken, normal size, seven, eight bucks, nine bucks. If you buy the same exact chicken pre-cut, how much more does it cost to buy something pre-cut versus whole? Most of you have no idea because you don't what? Yeah, or cook because you're not a Mrs. What? Exactly. So it's usually two or three dollars more, usually three dollars more for a pre-cut chicken versus a whole chicken. If we use the butcher knife and we go right through the bone, right through the joints, and we separate ourselves, it takes about Eh, six and a half, seven seconds. Okay, if we do that ourselves, we're gonna save how many dollars every time minimum? Two to three bucks. Let's say two. If we save two dollars every single time, and we, the average family say does chicken once a week, two dollars once a week, that's two dollars a week times 52 weeks, that's $104 per year. Over 30 years, how much do they save over a lifetime by cut, cutting chicken with their butcher knife? Three thousand dollars. This one knife pays for the set. This one knife pays for the set. Just chicken. The money they save on buying chickens will, buy, will pay for the set, just with the butcher knife. You guys like that? How about the, the trimmer, the trimmer on tomatoes? Would you say that the average family will save uh, at least two tomatoes per week by not wasting scraps? Yeah. So if a tomato is 50 cents, let's say it's a dollar a week, okay? Dollar a week, okay, times 52 weeks, 52 weeks, you know, it's $52 a year. Over 30 years, they're gonna save $1,500 on tomatoes. So if I lived off of chicken and tomatoes and I had the trimmer and the butcher knife, how much am I saving over a lifetime? $4,500. Even if I just lived off of those two foods and I had those two knives, does Cutco save money? Yes. It doesn't make sense not to buy a set of Cutco. All right, ready for the butcher knife? All right, now, we're not gonna go like Gallagher style. It's not like, you know, hacking away at it. Uh, the way that it's used is that the it's a straight edge. Uh, it's got a curve to it, so we're gonna just break the seal and then we're gonna use the weight of the knife to power through. This is the coolest thing you're ever gonna see. Would you trust another knife with that? No. no. Is that pretty sick or what? Yeah. All right, let's go for some big piece. I didn't cut that the most even, but check this out.
Is that awesome or what? You guys see the importance of the butcher knife in the set? Yes. Who's getting fired up about Cutco? Do you see the importance of cutting food in your demo? Yes. All right. All right, so there is the watermelon and there's the butcher knife. And this thing is awesome. All right, uh, now, the butcher knife is uh, not a chopping knife. That's why you have your what? French chef. French chef knife. Now, the French chef is awesome. This is uh, one of my, it's, it's probably the, it's a very necessary knife. Some people would argue that it's the most necessary knife that you have to have in your set. It's the French chef. Now, it looks long, right? It looks like the Jason knife, looks like the machete knife. Okay, I need some carrots, guys. Uh, so this is, the, uh, this is a very, very important knife. Now, the longer it is, the safer it is. Okay, so you would think that long is like scary and dangerous, especially somebody who's got like a really tiny, like a tiny Mrs. Jones. Who's got a, like a super tiny mom? Okay, mom's tiny? Okay, if she had a short knife, we've got another version of a chef knife that's shorter, but it's harder to use. The smaller you are, the longer the knife you need because it's about versatility, it's also about leverage. Now, with a chef knife, thank you, uh, with a chef knife, the point of the chef knife always stays on the cutting board. You never use the back, uh, excuse me, the front half of the blade. It's always the back half of the blade. Okay, fingertips in, knuckles out. The point always stays on the cutting board. You don't go like this, like you see on TV. For home use, the way you use it is the point on the cutting board and just go up and down just like this. Now, because this knife is so long, it means that I don't have to raise my arm too, too, hard, uh, too high. So Mrs. Jones, if she's short and tiny and has little tiny arms, then the longer the knife is more necessary. Because if she had a shorter knife, she would have to go up like this to try to get leverage on it. So this is actually easier to use the shorter Mrs. Jones is. So longer is better for a chef knife. You get, does that make sense? Also, what you want to do with a chef knife, the reason why the French chef is good is because you can do you know, a couple carrots at the same time. So I can go like this, I can do my entire salad or stew or stu soup or stir fry, any of that all at the same time. It's quicker, easier to use. This thing is awesome. And this thing is sharp as you know what. It is unreal. Check this out. Yeah, that just happened. All right, so that's the, uh, the chef knife. It is unreal, uh, a really important to have in the set. Uh, who can read it for me? Uh, Yusuf, you're up. Every kitchen needs a good chef knife. The high knuckle clearance makes it comfortable and safer. You'll use it for dicing, mincing, and chopping. It's great for the six S's. Soup, salad, stir fry, stew, stuffing, and salsa. Chef knives are for chopping, not slicing. That's why you have your... Perfect. You have your slicer. All right, so you notice every knife has the transition to the other knife, right? So the slicer, this is a... Uh, oh, man. I love every knife. In, uh, they're, all, they're all unbelievable. I use this all the time. All the time. It is the best bread knife in the history of the world. Uh, Jorge, if you can read this one for me. Our slicer is the best bread knife in the world. You'll never smash a tear of fresh bread again. The long DD edge also makes it great for cutting cakes and shredding lettuce for salads. Okay, when you say, uh, when it says DD, you can just say uh, double D. Yep, um, so double D edge. Okay, so it's got lots of uses, all right? So it's, first of all, it's a perfect bread knife. It's got a long, a long blade. So the long blade makes it perfect for, uh, for making those long, thin strokes, and you don't have to go all the way back and forth. So the longer is better, especially for bread. Now, this is a really, really fresh loaf of bread. What's gonna happen to it with a normal knife? It's going to smash it. I'm not going to use any pressure. I'm just going to use the weight of the knife. I'm just going to hold it with the rivets, and I'm just going to drag the knife through. And I'm just going to let the weight of the knife do the cutting. Is that cool or what? Unreal. Unreal. Check this out. And with a normal knife, what's going to happen? There, no crumbs at all. Is that sweet? Now, how about like a French bread that's like a, had a really, that has a really hard crust like this, but it has a really soft inside. So what's going to happen with this one? You have to rip it apart to get through the hard outer crust, but then it's just going to smush the inside. Well, it's got the double D edge, so it's going to cut the outer crust, and it's not going to smash the inside. Look at that. Even the ones with air pockets in them. Is that cool? <laughs> you guys like that? Uh, the slicer is unbelievable. This is such an important knife to have in the set. Okay, for bread, for salads. Now, I use it for lettuce all the time. This is what I, I love to use it for. If you buy a head of lettuce in the grocery store, how much is a head of lettuce? A couple bucks, like a dollar, two dollars. How much is a bag of lettuce? Like three, four dollars. What do you get more lettuce out of, the bag or the head? What's more fresh, the bag or the head? What's cheaper, the bag or the head? 
Okay, so if you use your slicer, check this out. You cut the butt off there. Okay, but then what you're going to do is you just do four, one, two, three, four. Okay, and we're just going to make a half a salad. We're going to keep this. And then you just slice it like this. And you have your salad for your family. Or you can do the full head if you've got a bigger family. You guys like that? Yeah. Does that save money? Yeah. How much money does it save? At least how, much, how many dollars each time? At least two bucks each time. So on salad, whose family was like my family? You, did sal you do salads like every night. Every night part of dinner you do salad. Uh, my family all the time, at least I had a night. All right, now, even if they just did it once a week, $2 times once a week is $2 times 52 weeks is $104 a year. Over 30 years of using their slicer, they're going to save how much on heads of lettuce? So if I had the slicer, the butcher knife, and the trimmer, and I lived off of lettuce, chicken, and tomatoes, those three food items with those three knives, how much am I going to save over a lifetime? $7,500 saved on just those three items, those three uh, 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 foods and those three knives. It doesn't make sense not to buy cutco, not to mention the amount of money they're saving by not buying cheap knives over and over, not to mention how much more they're going to eat at home because it's more fun to use cutco, they're not going to eat out of restaurants as much. Make sense? All right, so when they say no to cutco, they're actually spending a lot more money, even just on lettuce, all right? So there is the slicer. Cool knife, right? All right. Now, the slicer, uh, it's perfect for slicing boneless meats, but not for anything with a bone. That's why you have your what? Carving Master carving set. This carving set is awesome. It just looks sexy on the dinner table. Uh, has anybody ever, uh, like, on Thanksgiving, like, it's really embarrassing to watch Dad struggle with the turkey, and it's just, it's just a horrible experience. Uh, so this is so smooth, and it just glides right through. It's got the double D edge. It's just so perfect, and it's just... It's nice. Does anybody still use the electric carver? Oh, man, it's horrible. You're trying to watch football on Thanksgiving. You can't hear the TV, so you're telling them to shut up in the background. Then the cable goes out because you get a power surge because the thing is ancient. Okay, this thing is awesome. It just glides right through. Dad's going to look like a professional uh, chef when he's cutting the turkey for the guests. So this thing is nuts. Uh, who can read this for me? David, you're up. Do you have a barbecue or host family dinner? I do. You won't, you won't use it every day, but you'll be glad you have it. You'll need it for barbecue, big roast, and all of your family occasions. It's important to have both forks because a turning fork is used to pick up food while the carving fork holds down the meat. Okay, perfect. So the carving fork, this is your anchor. This holds meats down. Is this going to hold meat down? No. This picks things up. It's the turning fork. Is this going to pick things up? No, right? It, like how, you can't get cherries out of a jar with this. It's like you have to like harpoon it and get it perfect, okay? So this is for holding things down. This is for picking things up. So there are two forks, but they have opposite uses, okay? So that's why you have to have both. Cool? All right. So that is the carving set. You guys like this? Now, the nickname. What's the nickname of the master carving set? Spare tire. Spare tire. How many wheels in a car? Four. Five. Spare tire. Do you think about it every day? Nope. But when you need it, how do you feel about it? Glad you have it. That's the spare tire with the carving set. Are they going to use the carving set every day? No way. Are they going to use it every week? No, not even every month. If they just used it on the holidays, even just twice a year, even just once a year, over a lifetime, could you see the importance of having that in the set? And that's why 30,000 people bought homemaker sets last year because it's so important to have that carving set, even if they're just going to use it once or twice a year. All right. Then it says, can you see how over a what? You're going to use every what? Tool. To complete your set, your table knives are used for every meal, breakfast, lunch, and what? Dinner. Dinner. Okay, and uh, Tanner, if you can finish up reading the table knives for me. They have a rounded tip and wide blade like a butter knife, making it a safer knife. But with the double D edge, it cuts like a steak knife. This means no more earthquake effect at the table. Because they are the most used knives in your set, we recommend two table knives per person in your family so you don't have to wash them after every meal. All right. Now, who has ever had the earthquake effect at the table where everyone's cutting their steak at the same time? You're like yelling at each other and it starts like a family feud. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut with their uh, table knives. It says they're the most used knives in your set, so we recommend how many table knives per person in the family? Two. So the homemaker comes with how many table knives? So it's perfect for a family of? 
before, if they have a bigger family, can they buy additional extra table knives? It's the most popular thing for Cutco owners to buy more of. Whenever I saw Cutco owners, which was about 80% of my customers, uh, they always bought more table knives. It's a very, very common thing to do uh, because you can never have enough Cutco table knives. Uh, my parents have like 24 Cutco table knives now. Uh, a family of four using these twice a day, that's eight uses a day, 56 times a week, 2,900 times a year, 87,000 times over 30 years. Is it worth it to have the table knives in the set? So they can buy a set without the table knives, it's called the basic set, but that would be like buying a BMW without the sunroof. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Most people buy it with the what? Sunroof. Table knives. Also the table knives come, <laughs> yes, thank you. The table knives come in the set already, so they don't have to buy them extra because they already come as part of the set in the block, so they're already part of it. Okay, uh, let's compare the Cutco table knife to your steak knife by cutting a tough piece of leather. Okay, Yusuf, you're going to be my volunteer. Okay, all right, so we're going to use your two junky table knives. We're going to use a wooden handle one, plastic handle one. Does this look familiar? Anybody steak knives at home? Okay, so we're going to use the wooden handle one first. We've got a tough piece of leather here. Okay, take this knife, start all the way in the back of the... Uh, Yep, perfect, and go back and forth. You can stand up if you need to. Go back and forth. It's a good piece of steak there. All right, you don't have to finish that. Okay, then do the same thing with this one. Be a little careful, man. Yeah, I'm going this side. Okay. Okay, eventually gets through. Okay. Cut coat table knife. Doesn't matter, it's the same. It's leather is leather, right? Yeah. We can do it with that one, but it's the same thing. Start all the way at the top, pull straight down. You don't have to, you've made, you've dented the cutting board on that I one. Did, I did yeah, know. see how, see how thin that is. <laughs> awesome. See how smooth that is? Yeah. This thing is, smooth. yeah, I know. Isn't that crazy? So smooth. It looks like it was cut like, you know, it doesn't even look like a knife cut. It's that smooth. Now, check this out. Uh, can I teach you how to sell a set every time? <laughs> yeah. <bad>. Man, <laughs> crazy. All right, if, can I teach you how to sell a set every time? Yeah. All right, this is going to take you an extra, uh, additional minute. You see where it says, great idea, stack up the leather and in, in strips and press straight down? Mm -hmm. Okay, so third row, I need you to stand up so you can see this. What you're going to do is you're going to cut the piece of leather. Now, you always have the customer doing the cutting, but for this one, I want you to do it. So you're just going to cut uh, strips of leather just like this, and you're going to stack them up. And you're going to say, Mrs. Jones, how many pieces of leather do you think stacked up would equal a nice sized piece of steak? And she's going to say, uh, like, you know, two or three or four. She might say five, whatever it is. Uh, it doesn't matter. You can stack up six or seven or eight. It's always going to do the same thing, no matter how high you build the stack. But we're going to cut up uh, these strips of leather, and we're going to take uh, their table knife, and I'm going to push straight down, and all you see is the marks on my finger, right? Because I'm pushing really hard. It doesn't even dent the first one. Same thing with their other one, pushing straight down, marks on my finger. Nothing happening. Cut coat table knife. We'll use a different spot so we're not cheating. And it just melts through the whole stack. And you could do it with eight or nine pieces. It doesn't matter. You guys like that? Yeah. So it shows how the double D edge goes forwards, backwards, and straight down. All right, so that's the table knife. You see the importance of the table knives in the set? Those are awesome. Now, it says, uh, although our table knives are great for uh, meat at the dinner table, many customers like the traditional feel of a steak knife. Our two larger sets have the steak knife option. Now, the steak knife is this one here. This is the one that I have in my set at home. So I've got the Pearl Ultimate set with uh, the, the Pearl uh, steak knives. They're really sweet. Now, these just came out a couple of years ago. Uh, we've had the table knives since, you know, the 1940s. We've been using for 65 years. They're unbelievable. They're perfect for steak. Now, some customers, they were saying, well, we want something that's got that, like that heavy-duty feel, like Mr. Jones wants that steak knife feel. It's just a bigger steak knife feel. It's more of a traditional steak knife. These things are awesome for steak, the table knives, but if they do want that heavier-duty steak knife, the signature set and the ultimate set come with the steak knife option. Nothing else has that option, just the two bigger ones, but they can get the bigger sets with the steak knife option. We sell a ton of these. They're really, really cool, and especially Cutco owners, they'll buy these individually to add to their sets. That way they'll have both the table knives and the steak knives. All right, uh, it says storage options. Okay. Uh, Eddie, you're up on storage options. All right. Turn me. Mrs. Jones, it would be dangerous to have a really sharp, high-quality knife while you're in a drawer. Most popular are solid oak wood wood blocks. They won't slide on your counter and have horizontal slots to protect your knife at least. We also have our safe storage trays for storage in a drawer or in the wall. Okay, so the wood blocks. You see the wood blocks here and the wood blocks up there? Don't they just look sexy? Isn't that awesome? 
All right, so these wood blocks, unbelievable. They're sexy, they look good. It says Cutco on the front. I had a customer buy the Ultimate set just because her friends were gonna be impressed with it. She said, I don't really cook at all, but my friends will really like this. And she bought the Ultimate just because it was sitting on her counter. Do you think people take a lot of pride in things in their house? Yeah. Especially people who have a nice kitchen, they wanna show it off. Why would you have a really nice kitchen with really crappy knives? It just doesn't make any sense. So Cutco just looks great. Uh, it's got horizontal slots so it doesn't hurt the knife edges when you put them in and take them out. Uh, and it doesn't slide on your counter, it's got the rubber pegs in the bottom. This thing is awesome. They're pressed and treated, so they're always gonna look good. They're always gonna look shiny, nice and new. The wood block is sweet. Now, some people like the storage trays. The storage trays, they're two plastic white trays that can go in the drawer. I'll show them to you later. Uh, but it's for people that don't like things on their countertop if they're super OCD about counter space. Um, but you can, uh, you know, you can do it in the set or with the wood block, or you can do it in the tray. Wood block is definitely the most popular option. So most people who buy a set, they get it in the block. Okay. Well, if you're getting the best product in the world, show it off. Right. Don't hide it in a drawer. Okay. Show it off, Mrs. Jones. All right, so that is the, uh, th those are the storage options. Now, it's very important to have a storage option because if they just put their knives in a drawer, what's going to happen? Jump. What? They're going to get lost amongst the... Uh, yeah, or they're going to what? Jump. Or cut themselves. You're going to have the sharpest knife in the history of the world just floating in a drawer? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I didn't want to be the rep responsible for some little kid sticking their hand into a drawer and getting cut and going to the emergency room. Okay, so I always told my customers to make sure they get it in a block or in a tray. Either way, protect your fingers and protect your knives. All right, so that is the, uh, the wood block. Does that come in an additional cost? No, 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 the wood blocks are part of the set. Yep, wood block is part of the set. The wood block, also they get a cutting board, the tray, yeah. So if they buy a set, it's either the wood block or the tray, but it comes with it. Same with the table knives, too. Yeah, yeah, all part of the set. Uh, cutting boards. Our sets come with a free cutting board. It's important to use a soft plastic cutting board, glass, granite, and uh, marble cutting boards are too hard and will dull your knives. Do you guys see the, uh, the cutting boards that we saw, how they scratched up really easily? The softer, the better. You want a really soft cutting board because if it's too hard, thank you, if the cutting board is too hard, it's going to dull the knives. So you want one that's scratched up. You want one that looks crappy. Uh, you know, you can wash it and obviously the stains will come out. Uh, but you want a soft plastic cutting board to protect your knives. Uh, if it's too hard, it's going to dull. Who's got glass or granite at oh, home? Glass or granite cutting boards, really bad. Throw them away, trash them, throw them on the ground, whatever you need to do, get rid of them. Uh, it's not good for your knives, okay? Softer and cheaper is better. Kitchen tools, to complement your homemaker set, we have incredibly durable what? Kitchen tools. The thermal resin handles resist melting and burning your hand, and the basting spoons rest on the side of the what? Pot. Pot, okay. Devin, can you read the rest of that for me? It comes with five necessary tools, basting spoon, slotted spoon, spatula, whisk, Perfect. And, okay. Uh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> and it comes in a block which matches your homemaker block. These five tools will replace two drawers full of the kitchen. Who's got the junk drawer that has like all the spatulas in there? You try to open it, like the spatula flies across the room, it gets stuck, you can't do it, okay. Who's got the big tub of junk in the corner that's got like, it's a big colorful pot of stuff and it's just got like random melted, in it. yeah. It just looks horrible. This will replace two drawers full of kitchen tools and that pot of junk in the corner. Now, it's got thermal resin handles so it won't burn your hand. The basting spoons, they rest on the side of the pot. So if in between stirs, you just sit it up there on the side of the pot, that way you don't make a mess of the counter, it doesn't slide into the pot. Have you ever lost a spoon and you have to like fish it out? Okay, this just sits up on the side. Really cool, right? So it's got this, the basting spoon, it's got the slotted spoon for like peas and green beans and uh, corn and stuff like that. And then you've got the spatula for spatuling. You have the, uh, the ladle for ladling. It's got the lip on both sides. And then the whisk. This whisk is awesome. We call it the mixer. Uh, have you ever like gone, uh, you ever like have to take turns when you're like mixing something? Like it, it's just, you get so tired, you're going around the circle and you know, it's just, oh, it's horrible. You have to take turns doing it. So this whisk, instead of going around a circle, just go back and forth. It's got the coils there. You just turn your wrist back and forth. Grandma could do this all day. She's never going to get tired. She's never going to get fatigued. You can drink coffee while you're doing it. Okay. You can watch the news. You can read the newspaper. Okay. You can do anything you want. It's easy. You guys like that? And you know when there's stuff, when you're trying to scrape the bowl to get like the last bit of batter or you know egg out of the, the bowl there and you get to scrape it for like 20 minutes and you just can't get the last drop. This goes down to the side. The flat edge scrapes the bowl. Cool or what? You guys like that? Yeah. Cutco thinks of everything. All right, so that is the uh, kitchen tool set and that is the homemaker set. Any questions on the homemaker or the kitchen tools?
Do you guys see the importance of cutting food in your presentations? Yeah. Awesome. Well, I am pumped. I'm excited. Oh, can I get my petite carver real quick? Check this out. So the, uh, we got a cantaloupe here. This is fun. You take the ice cream scoop. This is the best ice cream scoop in the history of the planet. But you take your ice cream scoop. Can you take the lid off there for me? And, uh, and you can just scoop out the, uh, the seeds there. OK, and then with the petite carver, <laughs> just speechless. <laughs> Isn't that cool? All right. Can you get the block of cheese for me? OK, so uh, who brought the block of cheese? Thank you for bringing the box of cheese. Okay, we've got our cheese knife, and the, the cheese knife is the most unbelievable thing in the world. It's actually the sharpest, the sharpest knife that Cutco makes. I'll tell you more details about it tomorrow, uh, but this cheese knife is, uh, is unreal. I need a cutting board as well. Uh, this cheese knife is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, it's got the uh, holes in it so you don't drag your cheese. It's got a, uh, a special double D edge that's condensed. Uh, that way it's twice as many little edges per inch as the normal double D edge. It's uh, part of our signature set as well. But, uh, but this thing is awesome. How hard is it to cut a block of cheese with a normal knife? Okay. I'm not even going to take the wrapper off. Okay. So we're just going to just go right through. But what usually happens to a to a block of cheese when you cut with a normal cheese knife? It gets stuck. You guys like this? Yeah. You think Mrs. Jones will like this? Yeah. All right. So this comes in our signature set. So do all those tools right there come in the signature set? Nope. I'll tell you more about them tomorrow. I just wanted to show off the cheese knife. That way they can cut up some cheese so you guys can have it for part of the buffet. All right. So uh, you guys can cut up all that cheese back there. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to role play. So with your partner, we're going to do role playing. We're going to go through four times through so everybody gets to do each piece twice. I want you to switch off each knife. Okay, so um, when we role play, uh, let's say, so uh, Logan and Chris are role playing partners. Chris is going to do the intro and the pairing knife, and then Logan's going to do the trimmer, and then Chris is going to do the spatula spreader, and then Logan's going to do the petite carver. Right? You can go back and forth with each piece. When you get to the end, just switch the order. That way you're doing the opposite pieces four times through twice each. Now, we need to be very efficient with this. When I call your row, I'm going to do a half a row at a time. I'm just going to take like three role playing groups at a time. When I call your group, you're going to go to the back of the room, and what you're going to do is you're going to take a peeler, and you're going to peel a carrot. Okay, So we're going to have the trash can back there. We're going to have some peelers. You're going to peel a carrot. I want you to make the sound effect, and I want you to go, <laughs> I want you to get, a, get the hang of using the peeler. After you cut the carrot, uh, peel the carrot with a the peeler, then you're going to get a plate of food, you're going to get a fork, you're going to load up on fruits and veggies and some bread and, and whatever is back there, and then you're going to come back to your seat. Now, when you come back to your seat, it's not time to just like stare at the ceiling and eat your food. You're going to eat but roll plate at the same time. You're going to switch off every night for the first time or two through, and then after that, when you get your food, then with your partner, Chris is going to go through the whole page six while Logan eats, and then they're going to switch. Chris is going to eat while Logan does page seven, and they're going to switch again. Now, make sure that when your partner is reading, and, uh, and you know, you're reading too, so you can focus on it. This is the part that I wasn't as intense and in tune with when I was role playing during my training, and I got some of the pieces mixed up. The more familiar you are, you're familiar you are with the pieces, the easier your demo will be, the more fun it will be. So really, really focus on this. Pay attention so you can learn all the knives. And, um, and uh, when your partner is eating, you read and then switch back and forth. Even when you're eating, though, just make sure you're reading, you're getting that visual uh, memorization. Sound good? Yes. All right. So four times through, twice each. Kick butt. I'm going to turn on the tunes. Are we driving demos? Uh, demos are being driven. It seems like $1,000. All right. I want you to give me uh, sales updates. That way I can promote it. Um, uh, make hit, hit it. He hit 10K? He's over, uh, he's at like $1,600 on Lolo, so I think that. Uh, well, he was at, no, no. So he's at like 92. Uh, yeah, he was uh, at 74 on your first weekend. Heard you popped another set sale today? Yeah. Nice yeah, job. Like, See, your sales keep on getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, it's awesome. It. 
Awesome. Are you close to your 3K? Did you hit your 3K? I have no idea, honestly, okay. off the top of my head. Yeah. You're not it's adding just, it up? It's just busy, busy, Good. Busy. Good. How many more do you have for today? I got one more this afternoon, and then I have two tomorrow. Okay, good. Good interview? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't keep three out of seven, so. Oh, they were just selective. Yeah, two of them were older guys, and one girl was just interested. I was just like, yeah. Good. But well, you kept three, four good ones? Good. It's awesome. Hey, Ben, a little a little bit later after your PC, I'm going to introduce you to the group, okay? Okay. I have a concert I'm going to right after. Yeah, you don't, you don't have to just load up Saturday, Sunday. Um, I just want you to get as many in as you can. Uh, what concert? Uh, the Tucker Kendra Summer Jam. What time, uh, is it, what time does it start? Six, six thirty. Can you do your first one? Can you do like your? Who's your? Like, are your parents I your best prospect? I mean, can I do it after? Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, because I can do my parents. Like at night? Yeah, yeah. Right that's fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, I would try. If you can do your first one, that way you get the kinks out and you're feeling good. I want you to at least get your first sale. That way you're feeling confident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, I know it's in the Regis community. It's. I know you, you know how it works. They want to buy it. They make your set, but yep. they want to have steak knives as well. We sell the steak knives separately, or they only do it. Yeah, so that's what a lot of customers do. Is they'll get the homemaker with the regular table knives for everyday use. Yeah. And they'll buy an additional set of steak yeah. knives for their. I feel like that's just an easy sale all the time. Yeah, yeah. Who, who's your first person you want to see? Uh, for me, it's uh, a friend of mine. Uh, she doesn't live far from me, so I can't even walk to this place. Yeah. What's uh? Is he married? Yes, he is married. Good. Owns a house. Good. Good, good, good. All right. Cool. You have other family you can show? Family and friends? Uh, I have other friends. Yeah. Got it. How old are you? Uh, 20. Okay. But you got older friends? Yes. Okay. All right. We got to focus on Max this weekend, right? Yeah. Cool. Damien, how you feel? Uh, yeah, my aunt. Is it your first yeah, sale? She, yeah, she could. You think you're going to sell your first homemaker on your first demo? Sell it at Austin. Yeah. I'm pretty sure she'll probably buy it at Austin. That's what I'm thinking. We've got to show her first. Tomorrow right after training. Cool. How sweet would that be to hit your first promotion? Yeah. Maybe your second promotion on your first demo? Yeah. This is one of the... Already. She has a big cook, so she nice. always cooks. So she's you think you can upgrade her to the set? Yeah. yeah. I think once when I, cause once when I told her, she was like, oh yeah, you better come to me first. Like, nice. So Tomorrow right at the training. You yeah. show her first, get your first sale. And if you sell your first set, you hit your first promotion right yeah. away. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. You have some other good Mac customers to show? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my whole family's pretty much, they're all cookers. So. Yeah. yeah. What do they do? What does your family do? Uh, well, my mom's a medical assistant over yeah. at uh, the Award Denver Cardiology. Oh, nice. She does like heart surgeries and all that. Got it. My dad owns his own business, Harvard Flooring. Oh, nice. Yeah. So he appreciates good quality stuff. Yeah. Anybody who's in like construction or remodeling, they always appreciate high quality tools because he's using his hands all the time. Yeah. So he's got to have good kitchen knives. Like, why would you have like really good tools and then really crappy kitchen knives? So yeah. that'll be a good one. So show your grandma. If you can show your grandma and your mom and dad tomorrow night, you could kick everyone's ass <laughs> yeah. in here. Nice. Yeah. Hey, you think you can get your face up on this wall? Hopefully. I'm going to try. Dude, where did you go to school? I just graduated from Eagle Crest. Eagle Crest, okay. Yeah. Got it. We got some, oh, we, um, uh, Bree, where's Bree on this back wall? Bree went to Eagle Crest. She graduated a couple of years ago, but she went to Eagle Crest. Okay. So, you got to keep the tradition alive. Yeah. All right.